Seems distant. Strange. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day here. It's finally freaking Friday. We are 139 days. Oh my goodness. Only 139 days away from the kickoff of the NFL season. The Dallas Cowboys, well, they got a lot of work to do. A hell of a lot of work to do. And if anything is going to be made of this season, we have everybody with the doom and gloom where the Dallas Cowboys have done nothing in the way of free agency like they never do. And everybody is already burying them and anointing all of the people that have made a lot of different moves. If the Cowboys are going to be successful this year, if the Dallas Cowboys are going to be successful this year, it is going to take the guys from within to do it. Stephen Jones, whether you like him, hate him, want to call him cat, cat boy or push him off a bridge, he believes in our own guys and the guys that they draft. Well, one of the things I will say is that philosophy actually comes from Jimmy Johnson, who, when you think about the Herschel Walker trade, I don't believe any of the players that they traded for ended up being great. It was those draft picks that ended up being where they got their players. And when you think about things that were innovative that they did with Jimmy Johnson trading, of course, their best player, Herschel Walker, and getting a boatload of picks. But not only that, selling that Steve Walsh was a great starting NFL quarterback and getting a first and two seconds for him. And this is the thing that uh, seems to be lost is the Cowboys just had better players across the board than most teams. It's a lot easier to call plays when you have a Hall of Fame running back, a Hall of Fame wide receiver, a Hall of Fame quarterback, a Hall of Fame left tackle, a Hall of Fame edge rusher, and who should be a Hall of Famer, of course, is safety. When you have that many lights out players, it's easier to call plays. It just is. The thing with the Cowboys is they're basically relying on the bare minimum. And this is a fact. And if we're going to be successful where we lost a Dorrance Armstrong, we have to get a guy like Sam Williams to not only take his place, but to be better. Now, there is cases where we look at this, where the Cowboys have let people go, and it ends up being that we have guys that replace them. When Diggs went down, Deron Bland stepped in and ended up leading the NFL in pick sixes. That typically doesn't happen. That's the case where they believed in their own guy, a guy that they drafted later in the draft that paid dividends. Well, Sam Williams is one of those guys that we're going to rely on this year. Now, of course, this is the time of year where they wet our whistle with workout tapes and videos. But here's Sam Williams doing some work here. Boom. And if Sam Williams, who is big, Sam is big. He's 6'4", 260, and he is fast. If he can take a step, and I pointed out a couple of days ago in a video, in comparison to um, Dorrance Armstrong, snap for snap, Sam Williams is actually a better player. He just did not get the amount of snaps that Dorrance Armstrong will. Um, he still has, in special teams, makes some boneheaded penalties from time to time. But you look at that and say, that's an opportunity where he needs to get an opportunity to get on the field where we spent a second-round pick. And hopefully, that second-round pick ends up being better than most. We need to have last year's draft class to be able to make some noise and play better than they did last year. Overshone is going to be key at linebacker. Without a doubt, he's going to be key because you can't expect to go into the draft and say we're going to get four or five starters without having multiple first-round picks. 
Interesting story on the Dallas Morning News this morning. Shout out to Dallas Morning News. Um, with Duke Mem- talking to Duke Merriweather, who's making the case for Tyler Smith not to get moved. And this is where I look at it and say, at least you have flexibility with Tyler Smith. I know the Cowboys love their position flex, and this is truly a case where, as his rookie year, he played tackle. He was originally drafted to be Tyron Smith's replacement, but playing guard last year, he was phenomenal. And so Duke Merriweather, who knows the Dallas Cowboys offensive lineman because he works with them more than anybody else that's not a coach with the Cowboys, knows what he's talking about. So Tyler Smith could stay at guard or be bumped out to left tackle. Reserves like Brock Hossman and TJ Bass and Matt Lewinsko hope to earn a larger role. And then there's the draft, which starts in one week. So they have moving pieces that they can move around. One expert says he should stay where he is. Duke Merriweather, who is as much a Cowboys offensive line insider as anybody without an employee key card at the team facility, based across the street from the Ford Center of the Sark, he trains some of the league's premier offensive linemen and draft prospects. Um, He, of course, works with Zach Martin, Tyron Steele, and Tyler Smith. His thoughts on uh, how the puzzle can be sorted out. His most adamant involves don't move Tyler Smith. He's a special guard, Merriweather said. Special guard. Could be okay at tackle? Yep, sure can. But I think fans like to romanticize that what he was as a tackle in 22, even though he was a rookie. The best way for me to describe it is Tyler's superpowers at guard become his kryptonite as a little bit as a tackle. He's aggressive in your face and able to jump set and kick guys in the passing game. Being able to roll guys and have violent hands at a point of attack and getting on guys early in the run game, at tackle you can't do that. At tackle you have to be more patient. You have to stay within your frame, within your technique. You have to pick your spots and be able to be aggressive and just not who Tyler person is as a per- Tyler is as a person. And that's not Tyler at his best when he takes his aggressiveness away. There's another advantage to keeping Smith a guard, as he pointed out, and this is one I talk about too. Ideally, you don't want two offensive linemen starting side by side for the first time. That's a weak spot where you can definitely exploit. If the Cowboys were to slide Smith to tackle, they'd have neighboring new starters at left guard and center position. With Smith at guard, whoever the Cowboys in certain center will work with an elite guard on both sides. The new left tackle would neighbor Smith, an AP All-Pro second team selection last year uh, in his second season. With the offensive line, it's about continuity, said Merriweather, who trains 18 draft uh, eligible linemen for the NFL Combine this offseason. People don't understand. They're like, your left tackle and center are gone. Continuity is out the window. In terms of communication, there is a way to salvage it. You don't want to have a gap in communication. Dallas has the option at center in the building between Hoffman and Bass, uh, Bass, and later uh, the latter is projected since Bass has never appeared at center in a game in his life, playing only guard on the interior line. But the sake of argument, Merriweather was asked to navigate a scenario in which uh, he is drafting a starting center and a left tackle early. If taking a center in the first round, Merriweather said he is choosing West Virginia Zach Fraser hands down for his experience and physicality. However, he'll probably be gone by the time we draft. The position's top prospects figures to be off the board by the time the Cowboys are on the clock at 24. They lack the number 20, uh, 2024 draft pick firepower to move up for one, although theoretically they could pull from the 25 they're currently projected to be awarded for comp picks. I, I wouldn't recommend moving up. I just wouldn't. You know, I think you need as many picks as possible, but that's me. I'm, I'm a guy who's just broadcasting from his mama's basement. So there you have it. The case for keeping Tyler Smith at guard. Now, you did re-sign Igota, who did not play well at tackle last year. He actually played better at guard. Um, but then you are now, if you're going by Duke Merriweather, who – Duke Weather works with more of these guys than anybody else. 
if you go by Duke Merriweather, then you realize what he's saying is, is by moving Tyler Smith is reducing his ability. And now you've got two starters inside. That would be the case for not moving him. And that makes perfect sense. The question is, are you going to be able to get a starting caliber starting uh, left tackle? Or are you going to go through and have a go to starting at left tackle? Or are you going to look at a veteran, another veteran, who will probably be in the uh, guild of, say, Igota, because the Cowboys ain't spending money. That is the question as we sit here Friday, where we will be knee-deep in day number two of the draft, and I can't wait. Um, it's already Friday, my goodness. Wednesday, we'll be leaving to be at the draft, so I can't wait to get there, and I hope all you guys tune in. So let's go through and listen to... The concepts of, of course, should the Cowboys get a quarterback in the draft? Let's listen in. This question from Sneaky Hambo. Here, Lewis takes these very seriously. I know. You know what? I, I get a little annoyed. I get annoyed because I know he's sneaky. That's the, ca- the, Cowboys, the Cowboys made Troy Aikman the number one overall pick in 1989. Since then, who's the highest drafted quarterback they've taken? Who are we okay. going with? So, they've had... Right. Dak Prescott, Dak. fourth. There was another fourth. quarterback that they drafted in the fourth. I can't remember his, mm-hmm. his name. Doesn't matter. They were, those drafted in the fourth it wasn't round. Him. I know, I know it wasn't. Yeah. It's not Romo, obviously. But you know, they did draft this dude. I remember this name because you know what? I just saw this name recently somewhere in the second round. Like in the early 2000s, when I was still in scouting, it was my first year okay, in scouting. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It was in 2001. Yes. And you know, there's, there's, yes. I think he was a Georgia Bulldog. If yes. I'm come on. Mistaken. Say his name. Was his name Quincy Carter. Yes. yes. Quincy. It was. It was Quincy Carter. <laughs> in 2001. I love it. You know, see, that's I my play, scouting background. I'm playing against like Quincy, baby. Bit. Quincy yeah. Carter. <laughs> my first year of scouting. I love working it. Working for Washington. Uh, I remember writing up a report on this guy. You ain't that sneaky, Hembo. Uh, <laughs> Huh? <laughs> Made legendary on Mike and Mike by his inability to take a snap uh, at one time. Yes. Which caused us to actually uh, enact <laughs> oh. the taking of a snap. And oh, I t- how many yeah, people remember? Quinn okay. Carter. Congratulations. Well done, Hembo. Well done. You deserve it. <laughs> Shefty is here. Let's run the hurry up. Big name wide receivers in the news, Shefty. Let's start with Devontae Smith. The Eagles get out in front of the exploding wide receiver market, Greeny, and get a three-year $75 million extension done with Devontae Smith that includes $51 million in guaranteed money. And again, there are going to be a lot of wide receiver deals this offseason. The Eagles weren't going to wait for the market to set itself. They went out and set the market Mm -hmm. with Devontae Smith, who they identified as a player that they wanted to have in Philadelphia for years to come. He now is under contract and they continue re-signing their own players. Meanwhile, the Vikings standout wide receiver Justin Jefferson no show for the voluntary start of the off-season workout program. Again, it's April. Again, you think it's not a big deal, but when the best wide receiver in football wants a new contract and doesn't seem to be happy about it, that is a big deal, and we will continue to wait to see where this goes. Again, he will not play this season without, without a new a contract. contract. At some point mm-hmm. in time, turned down a big deal on the eve of the season this past year. And speaking of wide receivers without contracts who didn't show up for the start of the voluntary workout program, C.D. Lamb. Also not there for the Dallas Cowboys, Micah Parsons not there. Both players in need of contract. Both mm-hmm. players want new deals. And C.D. Lamb obviously believes that his time has come to be paid. And I don't know that we'll see him around Dallas until he gets the type of contract that he deserves. And neither side feels like it's close to a deal at this point in time. But again, Greeny, it's going to be the offseason of the wide receiver deal. C.D. Lamb, Justin Jefferson, Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddell, T. Higgins. A lot of wide receivers need to be paid. And we got a lot of great ones in the draft that we can talk about as well. But the C.D. Lamb of it all is fascinating because that just continues to play into this narrative that the Dallas Cowboys have basically done nothing. Uh, Robert Griffin said earlier this week on our show, they've had the worst offseason of any team in the NFL because they're paralyzed by the pending contract of C.D. Lamb, who's not there, of uh, no. Micah Parsons, who's no. not there, and of Dak Prescott, yep. who literally runs that franchise. He has more leverage right now in Dallas than maybe any player I can ever remember. So, Mel Kuyper Jr., 
If we get around to the end of the first round, in a world in which Jerry Jones doesn't decide mm -hmm. if Dak is the long-term quarterback in Dallas anymore. Dak decides that. <laughs> That's not going to happen. If we roll around to late in that first round, and Bo Nix is sitting there, Penix is sitting there. Here we go. There, and Roger Goodell tells us the Cowboys have decided to do that. What will you, Mel Kuyper, say? Be surprised because the offensive line needs to be fixed. Dak Prescott's the quarterback last time I checked, and the offensive line is a major issue. That center spot, and what they do with Tyler Smith. You need a guard, you need a left tackle. Moving left tackle, you need a guard. So you need two offensive linemen, you need a wide receiver to help out C.D. Lamb in that group, and you need a running back. Running back's a big need area. Power's not there. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is this is a pivotal draft. The Cowboys need a strong draft. The pressure is on, whether it's Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma, Amarius Mims from Georgia. They need to get an offensive attack when the mm -hmm. first thing you know, Zach Frazier, center West Virginia, Jackson Powers Johnson, Oregon center, or they could go running back Jonathan Brooks from Texas, or a host of five, six running backs, guys, that I think are going to be good third-round picks. We know who those six are. So to me, the offense needs help around Dak Lewis. Don't draft yep. anybody, because guess what? You're in trouble if you don't get Dak some help. I don't think there's any question. I, I agree with you 1,000%. Look, you say they may need one offensive lineman. I think they need three. I think because I think Tyler Smith is going to left tackle, and they are going to need a left guard center, and they're going to need a right tackle also. Because really, Zach Martin's the only person you can count on right now. He's the only guy you can count on. And you're right. Who is running the football? For you them? can't count on Tyler Smith. Team, you're crazy. Right now, they believe internally, and everyone externally believes that it's going to be a player to some degree in the postseason. Right now, you're kidding yourself. As this team is presently constructed, they may not even make the playoffs, mm. quite honestly. And if you draft a quarter, you need an impact player in the first round. You need somebody who can step on the field week one and be playing for this yeah. football team. You don't need to be addressing the quarterback position right now. Let me go to a bigger picture question for you, Booger, whether it's Dallas or anybody else. I think we all assume we're going to get four quarterbacks picked early. Let's say absolute latest in the top ten picks and probably yeah. earlier than that. Yeah. Then there are the other two, if you will. There's Bo Nix, there's Michael Penix, and, and, and I think a lot of people may like Spencer Rattler as well. Yeah. Are those guys first round, late first round picks, in your opinion, Booger? I think Michael Penix has the talent if you can get past the injury history. I, I think when you look at how he throws the ball, he's arguably got the most velocity in anybody in this draft from an arm talent standpoint, but you got to get past the two ACLs. You got to get past the shoulder. I think he should be drafted above Bo Nix, even though Bo Nix may go above him because he's a healthier quarterback, especially if you're looking for that game manager type quarterback that has a high completion percentage, can distribute the football, can be that ultimate game mm -hmm. manager standpoint. But Michael Penix has talent, and I think if somebody comes up at the end of the first round and says, I want a quarterback, I want to get that fifth-year option with this young guy, and I'm not concerned about the injury, I think you take Michael Penix Jr. Shefty. I think Dallas is in the quarterback market later on, Greeny. I don't think that they could afford to go quarterback high. As Mel said, just too many needs. That offensive line needs to be addressed. Don't have a running back. Need another wide receiver. And this is a team that they have said that they're all in on. Well, it's hard to be all in when you have that many holes that need to be addressed. Saying that, if there is a quarterback in the mid-rounds, what round was Dak drafted in? Round four. And I think when we start to get into that range, I think they have to start looking to add another one. They traded a pick for Trey Lance last year. He's still there in Dallas. But there's the possibility that Dak can just walk out the door after the season. And so if there is a quarterback you like, that's always valuable to get, even with all the holes that must be addressed earlier in Dallas. It's easy to say from the outside looking in, but at this moment, it certainly appears like they have mishandled their salary situation yeah, well. so badly that it has completely paralyzed. Yeah. That, that part I can agree with. Talking about being all in and that has felt close the last couple of years. That, now, part, that part I can agree with 100% that they have screwed up their salary cap situation totally. This is where you have to put the blame. If you want to say that the Cowboys um, aren't adding anybody, that Dak Prescott's contract's holding them hostage, people. There are guys getting paid $15 million more per year than Dak Prescott that aren't in the financial hole that the Cowboys are. That's not Dak Prescott's fault. That is the Cowboys and their lack of being able to manage the cap, which goes directly to Stephen Jones. Just does, guy. Just does. All right, good people. Hope you tune in tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, for our live stream. We'll be here getting ready for the draft what else it's all we have to look forward to good people i'm mark holmes and as always i appreciate you guys
Peace out. We're gonna make him an offer.